Welcome back. This is another video of Data Engineering Zoom Camp, and we are talking about internals of Spark. In the previous videos, we talked about the Spark cluster, what kind of things are there, and we also talked about Group by how Group by is implemented, and we, and we talked about reshuffling. In this video, I want to talk about joins. I want to talk about two types of joins when we join two tables that are of equal size, and then another type of join when one of the tables is a lot smaller than the other table. And I will also talk about this external merge sort algorithm and reshuffling because this is how joins are implemented in Spark. So let us start where we left last time. So last time we created these two tables, uh, revenue for green taxis and revenue for yellow taxis. And yeah, so we did this by grouping by hour and zone. And now what I want to do is I want to join these two tables into one table. So we have this table for yellow or green. So they have hour, they have zone, and then they have revenue and number of trips. And the same for green. So this is the thing we group by. And what I want to do is I want to join by these two columns. And then as a result, have a wider table with six columns. So the first will be hour then zone, our zone, and then the revenue yellow, a number of trips yellow, and then the revenue green, and number of trips green. And this is not a column. So I want to do this join. I want to join these two tables by our and by zone. So let me do that. So I will take this one, data frame green revenue, and this yellow revenue, and I will just do join green join with yellow and then on on is a list of fields on which we, we are going to join list of columns and then it will be our and zone and then the type of this join should be uh, how the type is outer outer join and outer join is um, let's say when we have a record that is in green but not in yellow we want to have zeros in yellow and when something is in yellow but not in green we want to have zero in the green part so that's why the join should be the type is outer join and i'll call it data frame join for the lack of a better name and let me see how it looks like yeah i'll just do show what's actually happening right now it's executing the entire thing from the very beginning so at the beginning we're reading the data, the bucket files, and then we're executing this query, then we're reading another set of bucket files, executing this query, and then we're joining. So we're doing quite a lot of things here, and you see that because the join is outer in this part, we have null, but we have something here, and then in the same way we have uh, null on the right, but something is here. We see a problem that it's just amount number of records and amount number of records without saying that this should be green or yellow and this so i don't know which one is which for that uh, let me make the name columns i will use this with column renamed like that i will rename amount to green amount and number of records to green number of records and i'll call it data frame green revenue tempe and yeah actually let me do the same thing with yellow but now instead of uh, green i will have yellow and yeah of course should be yellow here as well and now we will join these two so i'll join this one with this one and if i now look at the columns that we have here then the columns are green amount uh, green number of records yellow amount yellow number of records yeah cool let me save this so i'll do right parquet and uh, I'll use data report revenue and then let's say total and while it is executing the whole thing let us take a look at the job so we have three stages yeah so this looks quite interesting we have the first stage this is the stage where we are reading the data we're doing group by and this is the same so this is the first one and the second one so the first one we are doing this for yellow taxi or green taxi doesn't matter and then for the other type of taxi then we combine everything here so here we have three stages and i think it just finished yeah it finished yeah we already talked about group by and now i want to talk about joins so you see it needs to 
finish this one, it needs to finish this one, and then it combines them into two here, doing this sort merge join, and then it finally outputs everything. So now let me spend some time talking how it actually works. Here in this uh, case we have two datasets, so we have yellow dataset with a bunch of partitions, and then we have green dataset with a bunch of partitions. Let me just use fewer partitions here. Yeah, so we have yellow and we have green, and we want to join these two datasets. So we have a bunch of records here, I'll call it y1, y2, y3, and so on. And this one will be g1, g2, g3, and so on. So this uh, y will be a record with multiple columns, so it will be our zone, then revenue and uh, count of trips. Right. So this is a complex record and what we want to do now is for each record we have in our data frame, in each partition, we want to create a complex record that will look like key and then this record. We have a composite key because we are joining on two columns, so the key is our and, and so on. So this will be a key one and then we have key two, y two, uh, so this is the first partition. So we do this for every record, so for the second partition it would be key 1, it will be the same our as zone as here, and it will be y3 and so on. And then for green, let's say it will be k2, g1, k3, g2, and maybe k4, g3 and so on. So we do this for every record and now we do reshuffling, something like we did here when we wanted to bring the same key for grouping by in the same partition. So now we want to do the same thing. Now let's say we'll have three partitions or whatever. Yeah, we'll do reshuffling now. And the purpose of this reshuffling is we want to make sure that, for example, everything with K1, yeah, I just realized that actually cannot be the same key in different partitions because we did group by before. But uh, what can happen is we have k1 here, but we do not have k1 in the green part. What will happen? Everything with k1 will go to this partition, k1, y1 here. And then everything with k2 will go to the second partition, k2 and k2. So we'll have two records with k2, k2, y2, k2, g1. And then for k3, it will go to the third partition, so we'll have k3, y3, and then this last will, let's say, go again to the first partition. So we'll have k4 and g3. So now we did this reshuffling to make sure that uh, records with the same key end up in the same partition. And now we're doing again this similar to the reduce step we did here, when we reduced multiple records into one. We want to do the same thing here. So if we see two records here, like in this case, we turn them into one record. So this, in this case, it will be k2, y2, g1. In this case, we don't have a pair because this is uh, an outer join. We will have k1, y1, and null. And the same here, it will be k4, empty, g3. And of course, if our join will be inner join, then we would simply not output these records. So depending on the type of the join, we decide what to do with records when one of the thing is empty here. And yeah, and the same we'll do here, k3, y3, empty here. And uh, again, the algorithm that is doing this reshuffling is called external merge sort. And we can actually see that uh, in the plan, this is called sort merge join because this is exactly how this join is implemented. It uses sort merge join. It involves this reshuffling process. And we see how much reshuffling actually happens by looking at these two things here, shuffle read and shuffle write. And uh, yeah, so here what we did was actually interesting. So we didn't read from the data we saved. We computed this on the fly. So instead of reusing the calculations we did last time, we just recomputed everything. We can try to see what happens if instead of doing that, we load the data we previously prepared. So in this case, uh, what we call this thing is we materialize the results. So instead of doing this chain of computations, we did one part and we saved the result and then we can just load this and continue. So we materialized it because maybe we need it for something else as well. Maybe we want to have a dashboard just for green data separately. 
So let me just uh, do data frame green revenue and I'll do spark read um, on parquet and then I will read it from here but from green. And I will do the same with yellow. So now instead of computing everything on the fly we will use materialized results, results that we saved previously and we will rename the columns again, do the join and let's uh, write the results. Oops. Uh, because I needed to do mod override. Okay, I'll remove the show thing. And let me see how the plan looks like. So it's also three stages. Yeah, it's not very different. Uh, maybe it's doing a bit less shuffling, I don't know. Yeah, I think the reason it's not different is because, um, I don't know, probably this data set is just um, too small to see the difference between the two. But let's say if um, this temporary thing was quite large then probably we would see some difference also could be that we are joining and grouping by by the same field so maybe that's why the plan we have when we do everything on the fly it looks the same as this one I don't know, I will not spend much time talking about this right now because the main thing I wanted to explain is how join is implemented in Spark and this is the case when we have two relatively large tables that we want to join. They are not super large, like 10, 20 max, but still we can pretend they are large. But there is another case when one table is large and the other table is small. And this is the case when we do data frame join. Now let me, instead of recomputing this, I will just do park read parquet. So I don't want to compute it and wait, I don't know, one minute. So we have this data frame, join data frame, and we have this zone here, right? So now let's say we want to see what this zone actually is. And we have this other file with uh, zones. Let me read it, data frame zones. I, you can create it if you don't have it. So there is this notebook test that I think we used for testing uh, one of the first videos where we download this zone cc file and then we write it to parquet. So actually now I want to read this file. So it will be spark read parquet zones. So let me take a look at zones. Show. Yeah, so these are the zones. And now I want to join these two tables, data frame join and data frame zones. For that, I will do data frame join again join and then I will join it with data frame zones and then in join I think the column name is a zone here because we have a different uh, name in each table instead of just using on and specifying the name of the columns I will use a condition here that looks like that so it will be data frame join zone equals equals data frame zones location ID and then the type yeah, I don't think we need to specify the type here so I'll call it data frame result let's see what the result is so it just does the join yeah maybe we actually don't need location ID here so I will use this drop method to remove location ID so now we will have the same data frame but without location ID so this is we also have some information about zone so the name uh, the service zone and so on yeah, I will now save it to parquet, write parquet, I don't know where to write, let me just write it to temporary revenue zones, because I, when I do show, it will only do a part of, of the thing, and I want to process the entire data set, that's why I want to write it to parquet. Let me see, data frame result, okay, it complains that it says zone int and zone string are different, so let me just uh, drop maybe... Um, zone lowercase as well so we don't have the id we will just have the name it actually finished it was quite fast and let me look at the execution plan we see that there are two things here first it was broadcast exchange and then the second was uh, this parquet and there was only one stage not two stages but one and we can see that it was just a okay, case scan and then this whole stage code again whatever thing it didn't do anything else before that except this broadcast exchange so i want to talk now a bit about this broadcast exchange and the reason this plan this execution plan looks different from what we had before is because this data frame zones is a very small table and what happens so we have one table that is small i'll call it zones and then we have another table, not table, data frame, revenue. 
and because zones is small what happens is uh, we have a bunch of executors that process this revenue to these executors so each of them gets uh, a partition of revenue and instead of doing this thing appending the key to each record instead of doing this and doing merge sort join each executor gets a copy of the zones data frame so the entire data frame because it's very small it just broadcasts this sends a copy of the entire data set to each executor we have three executors so the third executor will also get a copy and then the join happens in memory so for each record in revenue we have this zone id and we just look up here and then it gives us this information and we just append it and then we do this for every record so we don't need to shuffle any data we just need to send this small table zones to every executor and do a lookup there this is much 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 faster than doing a merge sort join i think this is all i wanted to show you let me check the plan i wanted to show you how to join two large tables and how to join one large and one small table in the first case we use merge sort join we add the key to each record and then we do shuffling and we make sure that records with the same key end up in the same partition and then the other case when we join one large table and one small table we broadcast the small table to all the executors and then we don't need to do any reshuffling so this is quite fast and because there is no reshuffling it's just one stage and that's all i wanted to cover in this video about joins and in the next video i want to talk about another thing that we haven't talked about so far we've been dealing with data frames data frames are built on top of another data structure that is called rdd uh, resilient distributed data sets this is what spark used in the first version and then in spark version number two they built this abstraction uh, data frame on top of rdds but rdds are still quite useful in the next video i want to talk about these rdds and what kind of operations we can do with rdds so they are lower level operations but they are still useful so see you soon